Okay, so if you have your lesson plans, you need to look and you are going to see that you are to reread Nora's arc or go back and listen to the recording of it, of me reading it last week to answer your um, comprehension questions. Uh, the comprehension questions are the check for understanding questions. You can find them on page 563. You are going to need, if you can see on here, that historical fiction <clears throat> anchor chart. Because as always, in the first question, one of the first two, they ask, how can the reader tell that Nora's arc is historical fiction? Well, if you go back to that anchor chart, we know that the time period is real and the place is real. Is that true in Nora's arc? Yes. Okay, sorry, guys. The cat will not leave me alone today. Um, the characters may be real, made up, or both. I think we can assume that these characters are made up. But the events, was there a flood? Absolutely. And then I need you to look at the point of view. And we are going to dive more into point of view um, on Wednesday. If so if you're unsure, if you don't remember what first person is or third person is, and wait till our lesson on Wednesday to go back over that. And then in Nora's arc, was there a theme? Um, I'm pretty sure at the end of this story, the theme was just outright told to you. So you can go back to the end of the story. So you need to write down these things from this anchor chart that are relevant to Nora's arc to show us that this was indeed historical fiction. Now, number two says, why do you think the author has Wren describe herself and her grandmother as tough in paragraph one? Well, when a question gives you the exact location, you need to go to that paragraph. So I would most definitely reread Paragraph one, it says, when I was born, grandma said I was so small, I looked like a little bird. That's why I was named Wren. Grandma may look small too, but she's made of granite. And she says, I'm tough, just like she is. Good thing, or we never would have survived the 1927 flood. So why do you think the author has Wren describe herself and her grandmother as tough? Think about that. Looks can be deceiving. Are they both um, possibly portrayed as weak and tiny individuals? Maybe. But due to their actions during the flood, it showed that they were pretty tough. Um, let's look at number three. What conclusions can you draw about grandpa's feelings toward farm animals? Cite text evidence to support your response. Remember, when it says to cite text evidence, you are going to want to say in paragraph six, grandpa says this. And so I believe that his feelings towards farm animals are blah, 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 based on what he said in this paragraph. Um, you can even copy it. Make sure you put quotes around it because those aren't your words. Those are the words of somebody else. And then finally, number four, connect the theme of this story to real life. What is the author's message and how does it apply to society today? Well, remember, they told us what the theme was at the end of the story. Um, in paragraph 93, it says, I've now lived in my grandparents' house for more than 40 years, and those hoof prints are still in the floor. I never sanded them out because they remind me of what's important, family and friends and neighbors helping neighbors. Like grandma said, everything else is just gravy. So I want you to think back to the relevance of why they would say family and friends and neighbors helping neighbors is important. 
these people lost everything in the flood. Um, and so they lost things. Okay. They lost clothes. They lost their house. They lost, you know, their jewelry. They lost furniture. They lost material things. And while that's hard, they didn't lose each other. And so I want you to think about why the author thinks that's important and how can you apply that to society today? And you could even apply it to the pandemic that we have now. Um, how is it relevant? We don't get to go do all of the things we're used to be doing, but who are we surrounded with um, or surrounded by? And go in and explain that a little bit. Remember that the standard is that you do answer these questions in complete sentences. If it says cite the text, I want to see in paragraph whatever um, where you can defend your answer and show that proof. Um, again, if you have questions, let me know. Remember that my answers might be a little bit delayed today because I actually have to go up to the school, um, but I will respond as soon as I can and help you guys. All right, I will talk to you soon. Bye.